don't accept drinks from strangers. What pro tip would you like to give to the opposite sex? My brotha from the same matha, what's up my man, so glad you can make it to another story time. Make your boy Andrew proud and hit that mf like and subscribe button. If you do, I'll send you a family sized bag of Doritos. Enough chips, let's start the stories. I don't know how you like it, so just say it. Do not be embarrassed to use the restroom before bedroom activities. No one wants to pretend they can't smell that smell. Excusing yourself to wash is never going to be an issue. This goes both ways. For the women out there, in most occasions you don't have to be worried about telling a guy you like him. We are starved of that kind of thing, and even if we don't like you back, the fact that you said that will probably boost our confidence for the next 10 years. If you wear contact lenses and become lost in the woods, human saliva is better than water for cleaning your contacts. While both fluids contain bacteria, water is more likely to contain amoeba and parasites which cause keratitis. Female here. When you're going down on us and we're about to coom don't go faster or harder or change anything you're doing. Just keep doing the thing that got us to the point of cooming. Things get hypersensitive down there so it's easy to overdo it in those moments and kill it. Your fragrance should subtly enhance your presence not ominously warn of your impending arrival. Edit. Many have suggested the fragrance is better implied than announced quote, which I believe was from someone famous in the fashion world. It was certainly my inspiration. I took some artistic license. Thanks for the gilding. You're too kind. If you did it to get her attention and make her like you, she expects it to always be part of your relationship. Whining and dining, romantic gestures, back rubs. When it stops we feel like you are no longer interested and it hurts. Edit. I am not saying love is transactional. When you start a relationship and do certain things to show your affection and then stop, your partner will feel like you do not care as much as you used to. Guys. Keep a trash can in your bathroom if you ever expect her to come over a second time. Managing her period is hard enough without having to come out and publicly ask you where you want her to dispose of her trash. No girl wants to walk that crap to the kitchen. Bet it ladies, take your trash out with you when you leave. The guys are rightfully disgusted by what they find weeks later in the line litted can they've all committed to get for you, but that otherwise rarely gets used. Talk about what you like in bed beforehand. Tell me how I can make you feel better than good. Be open and honest about what gets you going, and let me get you there. I want to make you feel good so tell me how to get there, unless you prefer I stumble around in the darkness, in which case, tell me that too. We do not control unexpected boners. They surprise us just as much as they surprise you. Also when you cry, and I get hard, I'm not enjoying you cry, it's a natural response, when we really care about someone. I think it's a mix of the flood of empathy hormones like oxytocin and some deep-rooted survival instinct like. Oh no. Bad times in tribe. Must make partner happy. Must make babies to survive future. If you find a beautiful individual, smart and funny don't instantly assume they're off limits, they could be quite lonely. Applies to both genders. A good solution. Always ask anyone you are remotely attracted to. There's a lot of fear around asking people out, but realistically it's only going to matter if either you have a strong pre-existing relationship which might change, and if that is the case, you probably know the answer before you even ask, or if you are asking it in a really creepy way. Just ask simply and politely, hey, do you want to go out sometime? Worst case scenario you get a no, and are able to move on to the next person. The anxiety you feel is irrational, so long as you can learn to move on from rejection, which you will only learn to do once you start facing it. The side effects of not asking and living a life of lonely failure because you were too scared to ask is always going to be much worse than the side effects of asking, which at most will lead to temporary disappointment or embarrassment, both of which you will completely forget in the fullness of time. It gets easier with exposure. The risk-reward is always going to come out in favor of asking, because there are no real consequences to failure. Some men, like me for example, find all sizes of boobs and ass nice. Boobs are boobs. We like boobs. Ass is ass. We like ass. Basically, 
We like girls and their round things, no matter the size. Edit, oh hey, thanks for the silver, stranger didn't expect this to blow up. Oh, and yes people, I do see the massive reply count for, but I have a preference. Preference is fine, I'm just saying, please don't discriminate. My type is short, thin, pale, shy and nerdy. Glasses, freckles, sweet and cute. Hell, one of my exes was pretty much all of these things, plus a hentai addict I'm just saying, I ain't gonna tell a hot tall girl, I ain't gonna even consider her. You never know, personality doesn't actually correlate with looks damn it. XD my current partner is like half the list, and I love the heck out of her. Be open to things outside your preference. Chivalry is nice but don't overdo it. We can tell when you're trying too hard. I had a guy nearly knock me over once trying to get to the door before me, so he could hold it for me. Edit, wow this sure did get a lot of attention lol. For those curious the other reasons for him not getting a second date were because he was pretty damn off-putting during the date. I met him online. He seemed pretty normal online, but when we met he was dressed badly in clothes that were too small, and not A-J-P-P-R-O-P-R-I-A-T-E he was 37. I was 24. He tried to hold my hand while we were walking from the car into the restaurant which I politely declined. We get into the restaurant and he tries to hold my hand as we're walking to the table, and I tell him no again. When we got to the table we started talking and he was talking way too loud. He started telling jokes and they were dirty unfunny dad jokes which I didn't mind the only thing was he was saying them way too loud. I asked him to stop because it was making me uncomfortable and he wouldn't. He just told me I shouldn't care what people think and continued. So I just paid for my coffee and left. It was too much to deal with. Mail here. Ladies, if you like us just say so, any hints you give us will result one of two things. One. It will go over our heads. Two. We will notice, but won't do anything, because we are afraid of ducking up a good friendship. So please, just tell us. Most of us aren't dicks, so if we don't feel the same way we will try our best to let you down kindly. Plus, if we do feel the same way it's a win for both of us. EDIT1? Holy crap, thanks for the silver, gold, and crap ton of upvotes. EDIT2? All those who disagree with me, you are completely right well at least most of you, and it does go both ways. This was mainly just a blanket statement as this is what I've seen happen the most. Also, those of you who are afraid of asking, it really is just a handful of people that are dicks, and if it happens often, it is probably for the best that you surround yourself with different people, for your own mental health. EDIT3. I want to say a few things. 1. The obvious hints you give us are not obvious at all. 2. What the duck is up with that alpha and beta crap, literally no one gives a duck, it's 2020 and you need to grow the duck up. 3. Similar to the previous one, men and women are equal, there is no, men stuff, and women should be in the kitchen, like what the duck is wrong with you, there are countless women that have achieved amazing things. You know why? It's because they don't give a duck about dumbest bitches like you. It's okay to be single. Being alone doesn't suck that badly, and everyone asking you why you're single can shove it. This advice goes to those in a relationship that think it would being alone would be worse, and those that are single and feel pressured to not be. It's worth it to wait and find someone you're actually happy with, even if it's only for a night. Pretty sure this advice is good for people of whatever gender, but so is most of the advice I've seen in here. Edit. Okay, didn't expect to come back to this blowing up. Can't respond to everyone, but here's a clarification. Yes, being single can suck. I should know, I've never been in a meaningful relationship my entire adult life. I know what it's like to deal with that. This post isn't for people like us, it's for those people that are in crappy relationships, but don't want to leave because they're scared of being lonely, for those people that feel like they're being pressured to keep getting into relationships that they don't want to be in because people won't leave them alone, and for those people that don't even realize being single is actually an option. Believe me, I know all about how much it sucks to be single for years at a time. I've been single for over a decade myself at the moment. But I've also got friends in toxic relationships that are terrified of leaving because they'd rather deal with the abuse than go a week without someone to come home to, 
and I've got friends that have went from person to person and have never had the chance to define who they are as a person without ever giving themselves the chance to figure out who they are as a person without someone else to define themselves by. This post isn't about judging people and I'm sorry if it came off that way. This post is about letting some people out there know that they have options. Thanks for watching. What did you think of the story time? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more story times.